How about we do an introduction to expressions in SSIS? Uh, to get started, I'm, I have to assume that you know a little bit, but this is still somewhat of an introduction level video. Expressions are something you need to learn very early on working with SSIS because they extend the functionality and the, they make your package uh, so much more dynamic. But they're also not that complex. It may take you, you know, three, four packages and working with them and kind of hacking around to get really comfortable with them. But once you do, they're rather easy, I think. So we'll start with the just a blank package. I'm going to launch the Business Intelligence Development Studio. If yours does not come up with the new project window, file, new project, we want to make an integration services project. Of course, you could use an existing project if you're uh, following along with some of the videos here. Uh, that brings us into just a blank package. If you have not watched the video on variables in SSIS. Let me encourage you to stop right now and go watch that one before you watch this one. That is it's really helpful to know before you work with expressions here. So I, let's see what we're going to do. There's no expressions window. Like if you start looking up here, you're not really going to see the expressions listed anywhere. But the expressions are integral to uh, the SSIS engine. All of the toolbox items over here can be set and modified and managed via expressions. Variables themselves, and we talked about this in the variable uh, uh, the video on variables. We could set a new variable. We could call it uh, this year. It could be an integer. We could hit F4 or go to view the properties window. And we can actually assign the value of the this year as an expression here. So this could be an expression itself. So variables can be used as expressions or you can actually assign those values as expressions. Uh, and this year, what I would actually have to do, I would need to know how to write the expression syntax. Now, if you don't know the expression syntax, where's that little help button? Where's my little expression builder here? All right, if, good luck. If you don't know the expression syntax, you can come down here to the documentation, go into the BOL, the books online, and you can dig down, and I haven't used this before, but you could maybe do a search, and I don't need your online help. Would you just leave me alone? I can't just stop it. it. Slows the whole system down. I'll suggest turn the online help off. It'll save you a lot of frustration. So tools and options online never. No, thank you. I don't need it. You guys are all great websites, but unfortunately, it slows the system down. Okay, <laughs> sorry, but well, my pet peeves. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what is it you want to search for? You could come up here and find expressions. And if you just started searching, oh, come on, I just told you. Okay. Um, I just want to use the local help. Would you leave me alone? Try local only. I, oops. In my zest to get rid of all that silliness. Okay. So you search for expressions. Here, the very first option, using the property expressions in your packages, is probably where you want to go. Okay? So you can use expressions. This is another good one, using the expressions. Right? But you're not seeing the syntax down here. Okay? Uh, and if you finally drill down, eventually you'll get used to the expression syntax. Uh, there we go, the expression reference. This is probably where you want to go. Expressions, how to topics, or the expression reference, because it will then start walking you through the operators, the functions, and give you examples. It may take you 30 clicks to get there, but that's kind of what you're looking for. So maybe in your books online, integration services, expressions, reference, I think is a, a good spot to go. I close out of here. I know my expression syntax, uh, so I don't need necessarily need that. Um, where you'll probably get the most help with the expressions is when you actually add a task to the window. 
So let's um, let's add the, the for loop container to this. Now a for loop container, there's a video, there's several videos actually on the container objects up on the website. But essentially a for loop container is kind of like a, uh, let's see, I'll do it in SQL and I'll do it in uh, a structured line, uh, C sharp or Java or something like that. Let's do an example of a C sharp. This is what a for loop would be. You create a variable, you assign it to a value, you say while it's less than five, sorry, I want to then increment okay, and then do something here. And so basically what it will do, it initializes a variable to the value zero upon the first entrance to this. While the variable is less than five, it will do something. At the end of doing something, it will increment the variable by one. That's what this plus plus means. Okay. Now, if we were doing this in SQL, we would do declare i, it's a little uh, longer, while i less than five. In SQL, we don't have the curly braces. We have begin and end, right? So we would do something. And then we would set i equal i plus 1. We don't also have the shortcut syntax. So this is what the for loop is going to uh, do. And it's very important that you understand expressions when you're working with a for loop. So they're a really easy way uh, for us to talk about expressions. So we'll double click right here. And you have the expressions up at the top. Your initial expression, these three will map exactly to your for loop syntax. So if you understand this for loop syntax in Java or C or C sharp, then they map up exactly. Okay. Now what you'll need is you're going to need some variables to make this work. So this is where it, it's helpful knowing the variables. So let me say, OK, we'll create a variable. Uh, let's delete this. We'll create a variable called i and it will be an integer and we'll start it out at zero. Okay. So now in our for loop container I could just right click and edit it. Okay. And the initial expression is at i equals one. So we'll initialize i to be equal to one. Our evaluation expression is less than five. And that's kind of like in SQL. While at i less than five I want to set up my loop. Right. And the assign expression is now your incrementer, at i equals at i plus 1. You have to go the long way. right? So this kind of looks like SQL a little bit, doesn't it? This is the sort of syntax we saw when we were writing transact SQL. You would not be able to, however, come down here and do this, nor could you say, that plus equals one. You have to do it this way. Okay. So let's get something uh, out of the way real quick. Expression syntax is not C sharp. It's not C. It's not SQL. It's not Java. It's not Visual Basic. It is its own syntax. It's not regular expressions either. It's some um, different syntax. It's got very easy rules to figure out. It's pretty easy to work with. And this is how we work with the variables here. This is how we uh, can just access the SSIS variable that we saw in the previous example that we just created. So that's our expression syntax. Right? Now, if you didn't want to do this here, okay, there is this entire tab for expressions. And almost every task, I think probably every one of them, has this expressions little thing. So you could drill down. You, the little plus box uh, next to it, hold on. You see that? You drill down and it will show you what you currently have that's being set by an expression. 